Okay, I've had it with the glass skin tsunami. I am flooded with videos discussing glass skin, how to get it, how to achieve it, what kind of concoctions you need to use, what kind of skincare products you need, what sort of masks you need, what sort of gloves you need, what sort of snake oil you need. I've totally had it. So I'm throwing my hat in the ring. I'm putting in my two cents. I'm going to tell you how to truly get glass skin. Before we get started, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Also, don't forget to share and like this video. Now, let's get going. So if you'll go to the average glass skin video, you'll see a pretty intricate routine that will eventually lead you to Shangri-La, the heaven, the promised land of glass skin. So it usually consists of skincare up the wazoo, meaning a lot of cleansing, a lot of serums, a lot of chafing, a lot of scrubbing, a lot of what have yous, and some home brewed concoctions that they expect you to apply to your skin to eventually achieve glass skin. Some influencers mention Korean skincare as if it means anything. It does not. It's just an appeal to authority fallacy. But glass skin, or at least something like glass skin, can actually be achieved. And you can achieve it much more simply than you actually realize. Here's how. So, first of all, what is glass skin? Glass skin is codenamed for skin that is soft with even texture and even complexion, meaning it virtually looks perfect. It's probably not perfect completely, but it's relatively blemish free and the texture is nice and smooth. Well, how do you achieve that? Any influencer online will tell you that you need to buff the skin silly and then you need to apply a little serum and then you need to apply a little mask and a little this and a little that. But here's the deal. Your skin actually produces most of the ingredients needed for glass skin. How is that possible? Well, the skin existed before the skincare industry came into existence, and we're talking about millions of years producing its own skin barrier, which consists of a staggering amount of oils and other molecules all coming together to compose this beautiful symphony of the skin barrier, protecting the skin, giving the skin a very subtle shine, and that's what your skin looks like under normal circumstances. Most of us have forgotten that, but the skin barrier is actually quite capable of standing up for itself and doing exactly what the skincare industry is trying to do after demolishing the thing with their cleansing practices. So your best bet would be to start as follows. First of all, Back away from all the abrasive practices. Back away from cleansing. I know it sounds crazy. You've been told all your life that you need to cleanse your skin because there are terrible things growing on it, like bacteria, which are really part of the skin, like oils, which are really part of the skin barrier, like other gunk and dirt and pus and what have you. These are all buzzwords. Don't worry about them. Your skin will handle it. So use lukewarm water to wash your face. You can do it twice a day if you want. Do not use anything physically abrasive on the face. Those are all undermining the skin barrier. They're actually inducing physical trauma to the skin and they have very little to show for it. So you're not getting any benefit with the scrubbing devices, with the exfoliating gloves, with any scrubs or loofahs or exfoliants or any of these products. They actually get you very little benefit and in fact, they're getting you tons of damage. So you're damaging the skin barrier both chemically and physically with your cleansing routines and you want to back away from those and let the skin build back its skin barrier in peace. That on its own will likely get most of you glass skin because most of you have either normal skin, which is what normal people have, the majority of the population, or oily skin, which in many cases is actually the result of excessive cleansing and excessive scrubbing. The skin basically trying to rebuild its skin barrier and produces more oil to counteract what you're doing with your skincare routine. So consider that. Back away from cleansing and scrubbing and do that consistently. You can wash your face. You don't need to let stuff linger on the face. You should be just fine. As far as any leave-on products are concerned, the majority of those leave-on products are snake oil. They're completely unnecessary. They are therefore damaging because you're spending time and money to get them and buy them and then use them and they have zero benefit. So you're at a net negative from the get-go. But get this, some of these products can actually lead to irritation and necessitating other products. So you're kind of building your own sales funnel by using a lot of these products, specifically serums and toners. So avoid using these as well. Now, if you want to remove makeup, that's easy enough to do. Use an oil-based makeup remover. Specifically, use either coconut oil, which works amazingly well, or white petroleum jelly, works also amazingly well. Just use very small amounts. Apply them to your two fingers, the index finger and the middle finger. Massage and wipe the makeup off the face and then rinse off the residue. Pat the face dry if there's any residual moisture and leave it alone. Now, as far as moisturizing, 
the majority of you will not need any moisturizers for your glass skin. Your skin will create its skin barrier. That'll be glassy enough. But for those of you who do have a lower drier face, which is usually the result of skin care, or you have naturally dry face, you will need to moisturize. The preferred moisturizer that I recommend is Shocker Petroleum Jelly. It's an awesome moisturizer. It's an occlusive it is not irritating. It is a very safe product to use, and you can use tiny amounts of it. That's what most people don't get. You can use a drop size amount to cover the entire face, get the same benefit as you would with a dollop, but you're not going to get the embarrassing residue on the face that'll just look shiny and ridiculous. So restore the shine of the face, but with very limited amounts of petroleum jelly. Now get this. At bedtime, if you really want to wake up the next morning with supple, soft skin, you can take it a step further and do something called slugging. Now, I've talked about slugging in some of my previous videos. Slugging is a slang term for a very heavy-handed application of an occlusive to the face at bedtime, letting it sit on the face and allowing the face to condition itself through the night. When you wake up in the morning, you do have more supple, softer, and brighter looking skin, and that's what slugging will do to you. So you can definitely go the extra mile and slug overnight and restore some of that suppleness and that softness to your facial skin. Don't worry about clogging the pores. Petroleum jelly does not clog the pores. Contrary to urban legend, it is not comedogenic which is a great thing. If you want to go with the vegan route, consider using our shea butter moisturizer, which is made with shea butter and sunflower oil. We do have another product coming, which is called Butter Oasis, which is made with shea butter, cocoa butter, and argan oil, which is going to be just phenomenal and great for slugging. And again, the best part is you can throw the entire medicine cabinet away. Get rid of all these skincare products and you're going to have phenomenal skin. Isn't that simpler? You're going to use practically nothing. Lukewarm water to wash. You're going to use white petroleum jelly. Or if you want to go luxury, use our shea butter balm to moisturize. You can use the oil-based moisturizer to remove makeup. Or you can use coconut oil. And you're going to be all done. You don't need to do anything else. Now that blows any glass skin routine out of the water. But get this. Some of you do have blemishes on your face. And those need to be dealt with. If you have melasma, which is patchy discoloration, dark discoloration on the central face, on the forehead, on the cheekbones, and sometimes on the temples, I prefer that you go figure it out with your dermatologist as that requires a pretty nuanced approach. The one tip I can give you is to use a tinted sunblock on your face as this is the best protection against the melasma getting worse. However, if you have freckles, meaning sun damage related discoloration, or you have what we call post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, which is the result of usually acne on the face, consistent acne on the face, then you can do a lot about it. Obviously, first of all, mitigate your sun exposure on the face by avoiding prolonged sun exposure and protecting your face when you are subjected to prolonged sun exposure with whatever means are at your disposal. And then obviously control your acne, whether it's through your prescription medications with your dermatologist or on your own. And then we're going to get to the next step. So the best way to mitigate blemishes on the face besides backing away from whatever is causing them, but actually actively treating them in most cases is retinoids. Now, retinoids are a widely available category of medications. The majority of them are prescription grade, but adapalene is actually available in the United States over the counter as either a gel or a cream. There's other preparations as well. I do like the gel. And retinoids are very simple to apply. You want to apply them to the entire face once a day at bedtime as a pea-sized amount out of the tube applied onto your index finger, you're going to dab that pea-sized amount to the middle of the forehead, cheek, cheek, and chin, and then you're going to spread it all over the forehead, cheek to nose, cheek to nose, and chin, and then do another pass to make sure it's completely and evenly spread out over the entire face, and then go to sleep. The one thing you may consider adding to that routine is a moisturizer to mitigate the dryness that adapalene may cause to your facial skin. If you have oily skin, you will likely not need it, so play it by ear. However, if adapalene or the retinoid that you're using that could be Retin-A or it could be Tazeratine, which are both prescription-grade retinoids, 
If those dry out your face or irritated, you can definitely benefit from a moisturizer like petroleum jelly, and you can even do the slugging routine and get two birds with one stone, treating the blemishes on one end that's going to take weeks or maybe even short months to fade them away, but you'll still be on your way to controlling them. You're going to get the glass skin texture and suppleness right off the bat within a few days of backing away from all your abrasive practices, all your bullshit skincare products, and moisturizing as needed with a great occlusive moisturizer. For more information about great skincare and how to take great care of your skin in the most cost-effective way possible, pick up my book, Six Skin, Skincare Made Simple on Amazon.com, now available in audio. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to share and like this video. Also, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. God bless.